So this is one of the few questions that involves centripetal acceleration in this problem set too. And uh, well, let me just read a question and get started. It's uh, um, so so you will have to bring in your knowledge about centripetal acceleration at some point. Um, but I think for this particular question, it's uh, if it's just a matter of using centripetal acceleration, it would be pretty easy. But um, as I was reading this question in more detail, I realized, oh, it's a little bit challenging because you have to set up a system of equations. So, so the question says, uh, oh, yeah, I see the question. I'll get to it after this question. Thank you. Um, so the question says, a uh, point located on the second hand of a large clock. Okay, let me, I'm just going to doodle for a bit. When I'm reading questions, I want to make sure that I observed all the information that's in the question and, um, and <laughs> make sure I um, didn't misunderstand it. That's why I'm drawing a picture of a clock with a, uh, uh, I'm just going to draw the second hand. And the thing that's uh, useful to know about the second hand is that it'll make one full turn in 60 seconds. So, okay. It has a, uh, oh, so I guess uh, we are looking at the up one of these points. And it's saying it has a radial acceleration of 0 0.16. Oh, radial. So it's, yeah, that's the centripetal acceleration. So this point is moving in a circle. And to make this thing easy for, for ourselves, we can say that its tangential velocity is constant. So it's moving at a uniform speed. And with any uniform circular motion, there's always going to be acceleration. There's always going to be acceleration towards the center. That's how things move in circle. So the question is giving us this information here. This is the radial acceleration or centripetal acceleration that they're giving us. And it asks, how far is the point from the axis of the rotation? Is the point from the axis of a rotation of the second hand. Okay, so they are asking for this information here. What is this distance? D. Or let me use the letter they are using, R. Okay, since I'm identifying this as a centripetal acceleration, let me write down expressions that relate to that. Once I know something is a centripetal acceleration, then from the chapter, chapter four, I think, <laughs> I know centripetal acceleration is speed squared divided by the radius of the circle. So divide by R, or the, the radius of curvature. <laughs> So, okay, um, and uh, so I guess that this is a good point for me to lay out what I might call kind of general physics problem solving strategy. And I'm giving it a bit of a grandiose name, and this might describe something that you were already doing. And if so, great. If not, I think giving it this grandiose name helps highlight for you the steps that I myself go through whenever I see a question. And this is applicable both to easy questions and questions that might be a little bit harder. And uh, the way I would describe it is it's a two-step process. There's a step number one and there's step number two. And you know, depending on what type of problems you're dealing with, this step number one could itself involve many <laughs> multiple steps. <laughs> and, um, and what I would summarize this step number one as is uh, write down all available, and let me do quote unquote information. And step number two is solve the quote unquote information. Um, I guess I'm using information in a very unusual sense of the word. Um, in a, any physics problem solving, when you have um, some piece of useful information, the almost universal way that information will be presented to you is in the form of equation. So in step number one, what you are trying to do is you are trying to come up with enough number of equations that you can solve the question. And once you have it, 
then step number two is solving that. Uh, so by information, what I really mean is a system of equation. And I would like to separate these two steps out because sometimes people get kind of bogged down by algebra or bogged down by more mathematical things. And um, I think separating these two steps out helps you first to focus on reading the question, uh, making sure you're deciphering the information that's there, write down all the necessary uh, the equations. And then, and once you can verify that you have enough equations, then you can just focus on the math. So looking at this question here, I've written down one piece of information, which is what I've remembered about centripetal acceleration. I recognize this as centripetal acceleration, and I wrote down an equation. And the question I need to ask myself is, do I have enough equations? And this is where it's useful if you remember something that you probably learned in college algebra, which is that when you have a system of, or when you have an independent system of equations, then um, you need exactly the same number of equations as unknowns to be guaranteed that you can solve this independent system of equation. So, so in, the, in my system of one equation, I count my unknowns to see if I have enough equations. So I have, so acceleration that's known. So my velocity speed, um, I don't know that. So one unknown, radius, I'm looking for it. So two unknowns. So I have one equation and two unknowns, and that's what's telling me that I'm still not done with the step number one. I need to look for more equations, more relationships between quantities. And, and this is the step that gets sometimes difficult because uh, in this question, it doesn't really tell you. Um, so it's up to you to kind of um, go searching for the right equation. <laughs> and um, and so it might, depending on your um, practice in dealing with the uh, kind of angles and arc lengths, it might take you some time to eventually come up with uh, this equation. But um, <laughs> whatever, however long it takes, when you come to it, uh, this is going to be one of the useful equation, which is one that relates the tangential velocity to the, the angular velocity with the, uh, the radius of the circle. And that second equation will be the tangential velocity is equal to the radius of the circle times the angular speed. Um, that might, you might remember that from geometry or something. <laughs> we haven't really done rotation. So if this is a little bit far from what you're thinking of, then that's fine. I think uh, um, another way to do this might be actually, uh, let me actually write this down in a different way. Um, Here's maybe more natural way to get at the, basically the same equation. So you could think in terms of, um, because you're dealing with a clock, you're going to know the time in which something happens. In 60 seconds, so let me label this time t, this point here will make one complete circle. So you have information about time, and you have some information about distance, um, circumference, that it'll complete. And that can be related to the speed of at which the point is moving. So um, you hopefully remember from chapter speed is distance per time. In terms of symbols I've written down, you would say, okay, speed of V is equal to the distance circumference of a circle is 2 pi times the radius of the circle divided by time here, time t there. So so this is second equation, and I guess maybe that's a little bit better. I don't have to invoke any angular velocity <laughs> that we haven't properly talked about. Um, so in this second equation, what I hope will happen is that, yeah, so I don't have any new unknowns. This v, I already counted. It's so already one of the unknowns. This R, it's already one of the unknowns. And this time T, I know it, it's a 60 seconds. So now I have system of two equations and two unknowns, and this is the condition you need before you can move on to step number two, 
solving your system of equations. And um, so two equations, two unknowns. I think most people can kind of intuit their way through. Um, so the way I would do it is I know I'm looking for the radius r. So I will um, be sure to solve it for that last. I have this already solved for v. So let me plug that in so that I can eliminate speed v from my system of equations. When I do that, I get, so this would be coming from one, plugging in two, I have acceleration is equal to this whole quantity, two pi r over t squared times the remaining one over r. Oh, so I think r's one factor of r will cancel. Let me do that simplification carefully. Two pi squared, so four pi squared over t squared. Okay. And I had r squared, but divided by r, so just the one factor of. Okay, so I have this expression. I think I can solve for this r in one single remaining step. So my r is equal to multiplying the whole thing through by reciprocal of this. I have a times t squared over 4 pi squared. And I'm just watching my units here. My a is given in centimeters per second squared. My r is being asked for in centimeters. So if I plug in time in seconds, seconds will cancel out and I will get something in units of centimeters. Okay, so I think I have enough to just do this in calculator. So let me just do that. Plug in the numbers. Acceleration, 0 0.16 centimeter per second squared times the time, 60 second, and then I'm squaring it. Second squared will cancel out. Divided by 4 and divided by pi squared. Okay, it says 14.6 centimeter. That seems reasonable. Let's try that. Uh, 14.6. And, and yeah, it's, I think, uh, uh, you know, it's not overly difficult, but I think it's a surprisingly difficult because um, um, it's uh, problems like, you know, word problems, they are usually easy when you can do kind of one step at a time in the sense that you have an equation, solve it for one of the unknowns, and then go to the next step, and then go to the next step. That kind of sequential thing is easy. Um, the next level of difficulty in problem solving is where you have to have this uh, entire system of equations before you can start sol solving. Because um, if you had to come up with one or the other, you'll kind of uh, get stuck because you'll be thinking, oh, I need to know the radius to work through the rest, or I have this unknown that I can't really handle because both of these equations involve both of the unknowns, um, you have to have the entire system before you can start doing the algebra. 